Today we're going to talk about using negative painting or negative brushworks to refine shapes that need more drawing. Typically, like trees, figures, animals, even clouds, they need a little bit more delicate brushwork. And in oil paint, the bristle brush and thick paint kind of keeps us from getting a little more refined. And the mistake is we tend to use a tiny brush to come in and get more refined, and that only breaks it up and creates more detail. So how to use bigger, simpler shapes with the negative color and background to uh, refine our drawing. Now today we're going to be talking about using negative shape or negative brushwork to refine more sophisticated objects in a landscape. Whether it's a tree like this one, the sycamore, or it's a figure, like the figure standing there, uh, or cattle, animals, clouds in the sky. These are objects that are a little more refined looking. And when we use the positive brushstroke, in other words, when I'm painting this white tree, it's fairly easy to get the shape here correct. Although I never get it exactly refined as I want to. But the minute I get on these branches, it's harder to make it more refined. It looks clunky, no matter how careful I am. What I don't want to do is get a tiny double lot sable brush and try and be very careful. The better solution is use negative brush strokes. Use the color and value of the background hills back in here or the dark blue sky and cut into my painting of the or the block in of the branches in the trunk and the tiny branches up in here. All these little branches that create a shape. I don't want to paint those individually. I want to think through the idea of using negative shapes of the background colors and values to refine the drawing. And a couple of examples here. This is a painting by John Carlson. And you can see here, the especially up against the sky, all the bare branches. And these branches are tiny little branches, but he masses them together and then comes back with this warm sky and cuts into it. Now, he's pretty close up on these trees. This is not a panoramic view. The further back the viewer is, the smaller the tree gets, the fewer negative strokes he's going to use. But he zoomed in pretty close, so he's got quite a few. And it creates quite a bit of detail. There's a lot of detail in this, but it's negative shaped detail. It's not painting every little limb or some of the foliage that's in here. He's not painting every little foliage. He's creating a mass in there and then breaking it up a little bit with some sky holes. Very little detail in the sense of what we think of detail. It's all negative uh, painting the background, bluish green, trees back in here, you can see how he cuts into that shrubbery. So it helps to understand that in my block end of the painting, I'm going to make this shrubbery just one mass, knowing I'm going to come in with the negative and cut into it. What I don't want to do, and what we all want to try and get away from, is when I see a shrubbery like this, I start doing this. I paint that, then I, you know, I keep on lifting up my brush and I have seven or eight brush strokes there, when what I should do is, when I block in my painting, I want to mass it in like this. Now, I want to be careful with the shape. I don't just want to round everything out. He's got a definite shape there. Then he comes back with the negative background color, which he would already have blocked in, and then cut into it. And you can see that's what he's done up in here. And you want to be careful with the negative, but not picky and overdo it. But the painting the negative shape instead of painting too many little positive shapes makes it look less detailed and more painterly. And it helps you refine the shape of the tree. So that's what we're doing here. Understanding how to do that. But along with that, understanding you have to be able to block it in a lot more simple than how you see it. So this one, I went ahead and blocked it in. In the tree, I want to see two values. I want to see a simple light right here and a simple dark. And I've got those separated. I'm simplifying the tree. 
there's a lot of half tone on the tree. I'm not adding any half tone. I can later, but on the block end, keep it simple, especially with this much sunlight. If it's a cloudy day, there's more half tone. But on a sunlit day, just simple dark and light. And I started with this mass in bigger shapes and then went in and just cut into them using the sky. And you can see I cut in kind of carefully in some places to suggest some branches. But otherwise, I'm just breaking it up. I'm trying to create a, a variety of shape with this, you know, these clumps of bare branches. They aren't foliage, obviously, because they're, they're just small branches, but you can kind of treat them like foliage and that they're just masses. Then adding a few smaller branches to kind of hold it up, give it some support. But that's how I want to see those tiny branches. I don't want to see them like that. Too many little lines. This looks more like paint. And of course, using the background here, the background hill, that color to cut in also and refine it. So block in the shape of those tiny branches, bigger, simpler, and then come back and refine it. Also with the trunk in here, both the shadow and the light, I'm using this negative background color, kind of a violet and orange, and cutting in to shape up that trunk. In oil painting, we're using thicker paint, which makes our brush strokes a little bit on the clumsy side. And we're also using bristle brushes, which also, you know, keeps us from being too refined. But the negative shape helps us to refine that. So if we look at a couple of others here, this is uh, some cottonwood trees here in Arizona. Both these images are in Arizona. One was Sabino Canyon. Now here, I want to block this painting in big and simple. So my block in, before I can use the negative, has to be somewhat like that. Then as I come back into it, I want to get the sky color. And I want a big enough brush. You, know, I can, you can always turn these bristle brushes on their side a little bit and get a smaller chiseled shape. But I'm looking at the photograph and cutting in and suggesting some of those masses. Now I can get a little bit smaller, but I'm using that um, sky color and use as big a brush as possible. Remembering that you can turn it on the edge and get a real small brush stroke if you need to. I'll leave a little bit of space for a bigger branch there. But that looks more painterly. It looks more refined. Now I'd come back and maybe get a slightly darker color here of this foliage for the, for the shadow. There's a little bit of shadow in there, but um, the blue is what's going to refine it. If I want to show more of these branches here, I can cut in. And then go back to the positive and maybe refine that branch just a bit. But I'm always going back and forth. Negative or the positive first and the negative back and forth until I get it refined the way I want to. Same thing over in here. I'm not spending much time on this, but just really a simplified version of that negative and I can shape up these. But you can see how it helps to simplify it first. If I get too picky in my block end, the negative painting doesn't really help because I've already gone way too detailed. So I'm starting to refine these shapes. It gets the, uh, give the foliage here. It gives it a bit more shape. And um, I can use that to shape it up. Same thing with this area here. Use the negative to cut in. That's why you don't worry about matching the color in the photograph. It's not the color as much as getting the right value, getting the darks and lights, uh, making the f yellow foliage here come forward. The background just has to stay back there. It's a matter of uh, designing the shape, suggesting the temperature, you know, the sunlight, getting the right big masses, and then kind of breaking it up. Whether I match any of the colors in the photograph really doesn't matter because it's photographic color anyway. I'll get a few smaller details. And even then, I'm coming back with the negative and I'm refining it. Get a pretty big size brush and cut into that trunk and make it thinner and kind of refine things. Negative shape. This is an olive tree or an olive grove in Greece. 
and it has real nice refined looking shapes in the trees. I like all these gnarly branches, all this stuff. And it's hard to paint that on the positive brush stroke. But again, if I can mass it together, like this is my block in, and if my values are right and the shapes are bigger and simpler, and I can do the same thing here. I can, uh, again, get a big enough brush knowing I can turn it on the edge and I can break this up. Usually with the idea that I'm going to simplify it a lot more than the photograph has. So I'm going to get rid of some of that. I don't like that. And a lot of it, I, you know, when I start doing it, I'll overdo it at first. And you got to kind of wipe it out or scrape it out or use the dark again of the tree to get rid of some of your sky holes. Or but I can really use a lot of different shapes in here to create more shape in the trees by using the negative. The problem with the computerized thing here is I have pretty much one shape. With our brush, we can turn it on the edge get a flat shape. We can press down on the edge, make it a little bit thicker or let up on the pressure and make it thinner. The computer here is getting, it's all kind of the same and you can see the, you don't want to have the same looking, looking brush stroke. But not just the sky, in the background in here, come in and cut in a bit more and refine the shape. Same thing with lights on the, on the rocks. When they're real fine, like on the tops of the rocks here, let's have a little bit of one in there. It's hard to get them just like I need them to be. But again, block them in big and simple. And I want to block in the lights. You know, I can look at the photograph and see where the lights are and copy it. But I can, it's better to look at the photograph, just kind of see where the light's coming from. And I can get some indication from where the lights are in the photograph. But I want to put the lights in that's going to better describe the shape and the form. So too many lights in the photograph in the shadow, I probably don't want to paint all those in there. And I added a couple of things just to be able to cut in. I can cut in here and refine the shape of these lights because it's hard to get a real fine line or really get a, a smaller refined shape with these lights. Same thing with the foliage. Block the lights in, come back with the shadow and refine those a little bit. But I can get fairly refined here and it's hard to do it on the negative. Use the background here to cut in on the other side of the rocks. But if I block in a lighter shape and the sun is in front of the viewer and a little bit overhead, so I know I can kind of see in the photograph where the lights are. And I want to use more rounded, half rounded strokes, but I want to add the lights where I think it's going to best describe the form. Then after I get the lights in there, I'm going to get the darks and I can cut into these lights now, kind of refine the shape. So I don't have a, you know, all the brush strokes looking the same. I can be a little bit more delicate, kind of refine the painting. But this has the added benefit of not looking picky or detailed. It looks more painterly using the negative. So again, this all hinges on being able to mass it in in bigger, simpler shapes. Not being too picky in your block in. The block, keep it the block in bigger and simpler because you're going to be able to come in with a negative and clean it up, make it a, a bit more detailed or suggested detail without overdoing it. I did the thumbnail and again, just finding that shadow pattern and keeping the drawing as simple as possible, thinking more abstract shapes. And this is what I drew from. I looked at the photograph also on the computer, but um, these are some of the changes I made in the uh, thumbnail here. So, and it, this is the first attempt. Usually it takes two or three to get shapes the way I want it and get the drawing right, but no more than 10 minutes, 15 on each one. 